So last night I slept out and second night that I sleep, of course it snows. And um, I'm gonna try and get to where I need to be today. Um, <sighs> About a month ago, I set off on a bike trip. The trek was to a farm in Pennsylvania. I wanted to see how other people were growing organic food and to learn to do it myself. I want to be self-sustaining in the future. Here is my route by bicycle, according to Google Maps. The first day of biking went well. I hadn't biked very much recently. In fact, the bike was only about four days old. You'll see a lot of nature and woods around me. At these times, it was very nice, but keep in mind that my muscles were in extreme pain. By the time I stopped for lunch, I had made it about 30 miles. My body's holding up pretty well, I think. It's going well. I decided to use pretty much raw fruits as my only fuel, in addition to some cliff bars we had at my house. When I stopped for the night, I was on another trail. I had no camping gear, but I figured if I slept in a tree, I would get enough cover from the wind that I would be all right. I had done 60 miles. I was feeling pretty good about that. 60 miles is about four times as much as I'd ever ridden in a day before this. I called my parents and let them know what, what I was planning to do, bike all the way down to Pennsylvania. They were all right with it now that I was doing it and were showing support for me. I layered up, tried to find a nice spot in the tree. At first I was feeling fine, but then I became uncomfortable. It was getting colder, much colder. I put on a bunch of socks, but my toes were still freezing. There was no position nor time that I felt comfortable enough to fall asleep and stay asleep. At one point in the night, I'd figured it must be at least 5 o'clock in the morning, or maybe 3 if I was unlucky. I had turned my phone off to save battery, but I turned it back on at this point. It was 12.30. I started crying because I felt so hopeless. You never realize how long the night is until you stay up the whole time. Almost at dawn, I got about half an hour of sleep. This was definitely not enough for my body to recover from the torture I had put it through the day before. Nor was it enough for my mind, really. I woke up at sunrise. It was beautiful, but it also meant warmth. I drank water from the stream nearby. The breeze coming off of it probably played a huge role in why I had frost on my bag as well. I had left a solar charger I had bought out in the morning, but it hadn't had much time to get any charge. I biked using the GPS on my phone. 15 more miles left to go on this trail. The trail was bumpy. My legs had no time to recover. My butt was sore. It was a tough 15 miles, but I made it through. A few more miles later, and I stopped for lunch. I talked to my dad. I left my solar charger out while I ate. That didn't do much good. It was getting cloudy. I had told him about the night before, and he suggested, of course, that I sleep in a hotel or a motel or a hostel. I wanted to get much farther, but it was about to rain, and I was having a terrible day. With my phone dying, with my solar charger not getting much done, I should try and call it a night. I asked my phone where the nearest hotel or motel was. It gave me a location, and I biked around for a little bit up around here on this map. There was nothing there. I went to the next little deli I could find, went inside, asked a few people where the nearest hotel or motel or hostel was. One lady working there suggested that I go to a Ramada about five miles down the road. Bit of an under-exaggeration. The instructions were simple, not much turning. So I wrapped my jacket around my back bags to keep them from getting wet. As I was biking, I felt I'd bike much more than five miles without even getting to the first place I was supposed to turn. My muscles were killing me, and there's a fork in the road, and I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to go on. So I go up one, and the nearest place I can stop, I do, and ask someone for directions. They advise me to go back the other way and say that I'm about a mile from my destination. I am in excruciating pain. So after what feels like much more than a mile, I turn into the nearest gas station and ask for some more directions. This guy says it's about a mile or two further down the road. Finally, something accurate. So I bike for about two miles and get to my destination. I was so relieved. I hopped off my bike, went to get my wallet and my jacket that I'd wrapped around my bags, but my jacket was gone. I could not believe it. My jacket had fallen off my bag somewhere in the past 15-ish miles. I started sobbing. Why was I doing this to myself? Why was that happening to me? I was trying to do something good. 
I had noticed an Enterprise a bit back up the road, so I walked there. Of course, I had no money, so I offered my solar charger as payment if we couldn't find it. One guy offered to take me. About two miles up the road, I spotted my bright neon orange jacket. Thank you, Mom, for making sure that you got me this very visible jacket. No one had taken my wallet, so for this, I was lucky. Got back in the car, and this guy drove me to the Ramada. I tried to give him some money for helping me. He didn't take anything, so I gave him a hug instead. Moments ago, I felt like my journey could be over, but now I was resting in a hotel, talking to my friends and family, letting them know about the struggles I had just been through, and trying to make a plan for what I'd be doing the next day. I rested well that night. You can tell by how bad my bed head is the next morning. I got to shower, but it was fucking freezing. When I checked a route from the Ramada, I realized I had biked for about 20 miles that day that accounted for nothing. They had only gotten me two miles closer to my destination. My body wasn't feeling too up for the rest of this journey, so I figured I could bike to my friend who goes to Princeton University, stay the night with him there, and then get a train the next day for part of the way. I only biked for 20 miles that day. But still, it hurt a lot. I hadn't really gotten over the soreness despite sleeping in a bed and taking a very short shower. Hanging out with Aaron was nice. A good change from biking and being alone for the past two days. The next morning, I took a train from Princeton Junction to Trenton. And from Trenton, I went to Philadelphia. From there, I had planned to go all the way to York on an Amtrak train. But I soon found out that Amtrak trains don't allow bicycles unless they are boxed or foldable. It seemed like things should have been easier than they were on the bike, on the trains. I decided I'd take another SEPTA train. The farthest west SEPTA goes is Thorndale. I got off there. My bike was beautiful through Pennsylvania farm country. People there were very nice, always waving. At one point in this day, I tried to take a shortcut. So I just went through this creek, trespassing through here to take a shortcut to here. And I fell into this creek. And so now I'm soaked, my foot's bleeding. Oh my goodness. Cold water actually kind of re-energized my muscles for whatever reason. Made it to Lancaster where I had planned to take a bus to York, but I had missed all the buses. I looked for a bunch of hotels and motels in the area and there were several. The first three I went to, all of them full. I began to search for another bed and breakfast, going about a mile in the wrong direction and back and all around with my phone dead. I was lost, it was dark, but I was able to find it. It was $160 for a night until 11 the next morning. This was not much of a rest at this point. I figured this was all a sign. You have to conquer this. You have to sleep outside. The last sign came when I pulled out my last energy bar. So the universe wanted me to do this. Okay, that night was much better. It was snowing when I woke up and I knew it was snowing in the middle of the night. I was pretty well bundled up and I covered myself with leaves. I went and got some food and charged my phone. I took a bus as far as I could go. I biked about 12 miles from there to my destination. It was windy, but I made it. 